everybody, and welcome to another beautiful Thursday morning. You're listening to Bhavani at IE Green on the Progressive Radio Network. And I have another great show planned for all of you today. Executive Chef Ramos Bravo will be joining me. He's the chef at True North Health Center in Santa Rosa, California, and I'll tell you more about him when he's ready to come on. But first, of course, I want to share with you some things going on in the news, some things um, that you can take action on, and, of course, share my weekly recipe with all of you. So first off, I want to just share with you that last night was my last COVID-19 Zoom cooking class. I've been offering these free cooking classes for the last few months online um, through Zoom, and they've been a lot of fun, but I have noticed as the restrictions have been loosening up, less and less people were joining as opposed to more and more people. So I figured it was time to uh, end those for now, and um, hopefully we won't see a resurgence of this virus that they are predicting will come in the fall or winter. And if it does, of course, I'll start my Zoom cooking classes up again. But for now, it seemed like the right time to stop. And um, last week I did just appetizers, and this week I did just desserts. But all the prior weeks I was doing a plant-based entree. And so um, I had a lot of fun. It was really great. And all of those classes are online my recipe page under recipe videos. So if you are interested in ieatgreen.com, you can check out the recipes um, and the cooking classes there. But it was really nice to be doing the cooking classes and having community join me in my kitchen once a week. So thank you to all of you that were joining me and to those that weren't. Um, like I said, you can still catch So um, lots of things going on in the news, of course. Um, you know, we had the Democratic primary this past week. Um, tallies are still happening. Of course, we know who the Democratic um, primary candidate is for president. Um, but we were even voting in New York for um, our representative and waiting to see what happened there. <clears throat> but voting is a way that we can take action and put our our values into perspective. And um, even though I know that Joe Biden will be the Democratic presidential primary, it felt good to me to be able to circle in not Joe Biden, but Bernie Sanders as president, just so that the Democratic Party knows that I'm in alignment with the green values that Bernie Sanders promotes and the equality values that he promotes and the the basically the values that he promotes. And um, those of you that are listening and have been with me for a while know that my values are much more in alignment with his. And Joe Biden is going to be our, I hope, our next president because we need to get the one that's in there right now out. Um, and I hope you voted. And um, I also want to just encourage you all to take some action, again, letting your values be known. Beyond Plastics, um, which is a wonderful nonprofit organization you should all check out, they're having a virtual actathon for kids, and it's their first ever um, plastic pollution virtual actathon. And that's um, through Zoom, Thursday, June 25th, which is today at 2 o'clock Eastern Time. Um, there's no cost to participate, and you can register right there. And it's, you know, kid-centered, and so it's really wonderful for us to teach our values to our kids and pass those on, and this is a way that kids can really feel like they're being involved. Um, we also want to get our New York State Congress to support the Fossil Fuel Divestment Act. And for those of you that know me, I've been um, a big supporter of divesting in fossil fuel for a long time. This is, you know, came out of 350.org's um, movement to divest many, many years ago. Bill McKibben spoke of it. Um, and we've been successful in pushing universities to divest. Um, my graduate school, Antioch, just 
sent out a notice recently that they have finally divested. I've been on their case for a long time, divested from fossil fuel companies, and many, many universities and state pension funds have been doing this. But New York State still has over $12 billion invested in the fossil fuel industry. And the um, our retirement fund, New York Common Retirement Fund, is still invested in the fossil fuel industry. And it actually lost money. It's lost um, over $25 billion since 2008. So fossil fuels is not where the money is. Where the money is is going to be wind and solar and the future. And so we need to get New York State to divest. And right now, um, there's 32 senators support this bill, and that's a majority. But in the Assembly, only 65 members are sponsoring it so far, and we need 10 more. And so on my website at ieetgreen.com under Take Action, there is a link where you can um, send info to your representative to, and any all representatives to try to get them to get on board with the divestment of fossil fuel. It is really the future, and it's where we need to go. And as far as in the news, you know, um, most summer camps have canceled this year. I think some are trying to still go forward with summer camp, but for those parents out there who are going to have their a continuation of having their kids home full time, finding some online programming that can gear you to outdoor activities so that your kids are not just on top of the screen time um, is really essential. And I know I've talked to many parents out there, and they're really, you know, having a conundrum. I mean, there's so much good content on the Internet, so many different Zoom opportunities for good lessons for kids, but it again, is having them sitting in front of the screen, and we need to get our kids outside away from the screen. And so there's links from the Brooklyn Museum's online summer camp um, to Old Westbury Gardens to Growing Minds. They all have activities that get your kids outside into nature, and I'm sure there's lots more that I have not um, researched. So find ways to have some structure, and then kids send your kids out for the scavenger hunt or the collection of certain types of um, insects or rocks or even sticks or, you know, look for pollinators. There's so many different activities that kids can do that will encourage them to go outside and be independent or with their parent or with a partner um, you know, of course, we need to practice our social distancing, but there's ways to get your kids away from the computer, um, but with some focus. So um, good luck, parents. I, You know, my heart goes out to you because I know how challenging it is. And, uh, you know, doing a good job and finding that balance is really, you know, essential in today's reality. So I want to share with you um, one of the recipes I did last night in my Zoom class. This is a mixed berry tort, and fresh organic berries are just plentiful this time of year. And so um, you can also make it, you know, in the winter, of course, using frozen. But right now with fresh berries, it's just really great. When I have bananas in my house and they start to get overripe, I immediately peel them and stick them into a plastic bag and put them in the freezer. And that way I ha always have very ripe bananas, and the riper they are, the sweeter they are, very ripe bananas in my freezer ready to use. So this recipe calls for four medium ripe bananas, and that gives a lot of the sweetness to this recipe so that you don't need um, much maple syrup at all. So... First, I'm going to make a vegan egg, and to make my vegan egg, I use two tablespoons of ground flaxseed that I mix with two tablespoons of apple cider vinegar and two tablespoons of water, and I just mix that in a little bowl and set that to the side and let that get a little glutinous, um, and that's what I'll use as my egg to help bind this um, tort. Then I have the four medium-ripe bananas that are in my freezer. 
a half a cup of maple syrup, a half a cup of organic coconut oil, one tablespoon vanilla extract, two teaspoons baking soda, and two teaspoons baking powder, juice from one lemon, or if you're using um, organic lemon juice from the fridge, you can use a quarter cup, zest from one lemon, one half teaspoon sea salt, one and a half cups of, I used a gluten-free flour. Now, if you're using gluten-free flour, you also need to look at the ingredients because a lot of gluten-free flours also have dry egg in them, and um, I don't want any dry egg or any dried dairy in there. So it's a gluten-free, dairy-free, egg-free flour. And I do that just because so many people that are in my circle of friends are gluten-free, even though I am not gluten-free. If you're going to use regular flour, I recommend using whole wheat pastry flour. Then a half a cup of ground oats, and again, I find gluten-free oats, and I grind those up. A half a cup of ground almonds, one cup each of fresh strawberries, blueberries, and raspberries. And if you'd like, when you're serving it, right before serving it, you can sprinkle a little powdered sugar on top if you want to. I don't think it's necessary. You can also put some fresh berries on top if you want to garnish it with that. Um, also, a little tip I want to give you in grinding up my oats and my almonds and for another recipe I use, ground walnuts, I actually grind quite a bit at a time, more than I need, and I keep them stored in the freezer, either in a glass jar or a plastic bag, and that way when I want to whip up a batch of um, a mixed berry tort or the cookies that I made last night, I easily have those things already ground up and I can just pull them out and I don't have to deal with dirtying the food processor and getting that going. So um, it's nice to have that as backup. It's just a little time-saving tip. So you want to preheat your oven to 350 degrees and spray your tart pan with some spray oil. And in a small bowl, like I said, you're going to dissolve the flax seed with the water and apple cider vinegar, and you're going to let that sit for a few minutes. In the food processor, you can pulse the bananas until that's pureed. Mix it with the coconut oil, the maple syrup, the lemon juice, and the vanilla. Then you're going to add the flaxseed egg into that. In another bowl, you can combine the dry ingredients, the gluten-free flour, the oats, the almonds, the baking soda and powder, the lemon zest, and the salt. And then you're going to mix the wet ingredients into the dry ingredients. And you just want to mix it enough so that all of the dry ingredients are incorporated. Then you can um, pour the batter into the tart pan and then press all the berries into the top of the tart. Um, you can also mix the berries in, but I find actually if you add the berries after you've poured the batter in, it doesn't discolor the batter at all with the blueberries or the raspberries, and it looks cleaner and prettier. So you can actually, if you'd like, you can make a decoration on the top of the tart with the berries, the strawberries, and the raspberries, or you can just sprinkle them randomly. And you're going to bake it for 30 to 40 minutes or until a toothpick or a knife comes out clean in the center. Um, if you have extra batter, you can also put that into a loaf pan, to set, depending on the size of your tart pan. And that's it. Super, super easy, super, super delicious, and I hope you all get a chance to make it. And so now, it, like I said, it's my pleasure to introduce to all of you plant-based chef um, Ramos Bravo from True North Health Center. And he is the executive chef at True North Health Center, which is an integrative um, a center, actually, that has an approach to healing, which includes fasting and, plant -ba and a plant-based diet. And Chef Bravos has been cooking up exquisite meals there for the past 13 years, or going on 13 years. He's the creator, creator of bravopb.com, where you can find his online plant-based cooking courses, as well as his two cookbooks, Bravo and Bravo Express. And although he trained as a regular chef, with a little intervention from the universe, he found himself working as a plant-based chef, and it has basically transformed his life. So I'm really excited to invite him on and to have you all learn more about what he's doing. Chef Bravo, are you with me? I am here. Hi, Ravani. 
Hi. Wonderful. Thanks so much for joining me. Oh, my pleasure. Thank you for having me. Sure. So you were trained as a classically trained chef. How did it come about? Can you share the story with us? How did you switch to plant-based cooking? That's quite a switch. Uh, Yeah, it it was quite a switch for sure. Um, You know, I wasn't, I didn't intend to make the switch. Uh, The switch sort of found me. Uh, I had left the hotel uh, where I was working. Uh, I was a I was the chef for this uh, fancy uh, boutique hotel um, in Kenwood, California. And then I decided to to leave because I was going to do my own uh, catering company. Uh, and then I, w- I was taking this class um, to do like a food safety handling kind of thing, which is required to, to run a catering business. Um, right. I have one of those the, too. Uh-huh. Yeah, and in the 10-minute break, I get this phone call from a, a lady who I didn't know at the time, but she was a client here at, uh, at True North. And so she told me, hey, there's this uh, guy, you know, my boss, who's looking for a chef, and he's got this, uh, you know, he's got this business he's had for 20-some-odd years, but he's moving it to a new location. Uh, <laughs> would you be interested um, but just want to let you know that it's a, uh, you know, plant-based slash vegan sort of facility. Um, and, you know, as a regular chef, vegan was is never sexy uh, necessarily. But I agreed to, to meet with my boss, and uh, little by little, he kind of wrote me in. <laughs> uh, uh-huh. And so we here at True North, we don't do any... Um, we don't cook with any oil, salt, or sugar. Um, right. And he didn't tell me that all up front. He just told me, like, one bit at a time. Like, the first meeting I had with him was like, oh, by the way, we don't do any sugar. Um, and I was like, well, you know, I'm not big on desserts myself. You know, there's always dried fruit and fruit juices and all that. Okay. And then he asked me to meet him again. Um uh, when he was doing one of his lectures, uh, so I, I listened to him, and he's very—he's a very smart man, um, and he's very engaging. Okay. So, you know, after his talk, you know, we talked a little bit. He's like, "Oh, by the way, we don't do any oil either." Um, you know, at, at that point, I thought, "Well, you know, that's that's a little crazy. You have to have oil to cook because you can't do—you <laughs> can't cook without oil." Um, you know, this was my thinking at the time. And then I, for some reason, I, I still agreed to meet him one one last time here at the new facility where he showed me, like, all the, the renovations that were going on, where the new kitchen was going to be put in and all that. Um, and I've always been a sucker for, you know, startup kitchens, you know, you know, starting up a new kitchen and, you know, sort of building it from scratch and getting all the new shiny equipment. Um, and that's when he finally told me, oh, by the way, we don't have any salt either. <laughs> uh-huh. And I just thought, well, this guy's crazy, you know, because the salt is it gets ingrained in your brain as a as a cook and as a chef, where you have to make sure that everything gets seasoned properly. Um, and suddenly, like you know, probably the biggest foundation for a regular chef just got taken, you know, out from underneath me. And I was so close to not taking the job because I just thought, well, you know. How am I going to do? You know, how am I going to cook? How am I going to do my job and you know, sort of present the dish to somebody? And be like, oh, here I cook this. You know? uh, uh-huh. But I went ahead and took the job, and, and I gave myself six months because I thought, well, you know, I don't want to be there too long, and you know, let my skills erode. Um, so I, you know, set myself like a six-month window, and that was uh-huh. almost thirteen years ago. So. So that right. was my, you know, quick version of my switch. Yeah. Well, you know, I have, um, I was trained also with the Whole Kids Foundation as a chef that goes into schools to teach the food service people and teachers and staff um, about healthy eating. And they also promote no salt, no sugar, and no oil. And it's amazing um, how much less oil I cook with. I mean, I still use a little because I'm, you know, I don't need to um, 
follow that strictly, but I use so much less than I used to, and it's amazing. And same with salt, and, you know, I was never that big on sugar, but, yeah, um, it's really amazing. So you push, you know, someone said structure is freedom, you know, or restrictions is freedom. I mean, when you know your boundaries and you need to create within those boundaries, you actually can become really quite free and to experiment and find other ways of making things taste good. So how did you first learn to start cooking without those main ingredients, sugar, oil, and salt? Uh, oh, it was a you know sort of trial by error, you know, just kind of <laughs> learn as you go kind of thing. You know, I, I started the job and, you know, we had uh, people that needed to be fed and I just went. Um, it took me a couple of weeks to, to get... Did they have recipes for you to follow at first? Oh, no. I had, you know, like you said, you know, I had my restrictions. You know, my boss said, this is what you cannot use. Um, after that, do whatever you want. Um, and so, you know, I had never written any, you know, plant-based recipes, you know, and certainly not uh, oil, salt, and sugar-free recipes. So, you know, on day one, I just started cooking. Um and it took me about a couple of weeks to reset my um, tolerance to sodium. So in the first two weeks, I had this little, you know, hidden little cup with some salt in it. So what I would do is make make food, you know, the way it, it was required for me to do. Uh, and then I would take a little bit and sprinkle a little salt on it and just sort of taste it to make sure it was good. So I figured, well, these people are not used to the sodium. So I'm tasting it sort of at the same level they are. Um, and then so I did that for about two weeks, and then, you know, two weeks went by, and then I could, you know, my taste bud had uh, reset. And then after that, I, I didn't need the little hidden salt anymore. I could just taste the food the same as it's everybody else. And it was just a, you know, one dish at a time kind of a thing. Uh-huh. And how did this um – this dramatic change affect you personally? Did you make the switch to your own diet? Did it change how you fed your family at home? Uh, yeah. You know, at first uh, I was just focused on doing my job, you know, uh, you know, making sure I was doing a good job. So um, in order to do that, I was tasting and eating my food, you know, all the time. I had no intentions of anything other than just, doing my job. Um, but, you know, without trying, I lost about 30 pounds within about six months. Um, and then my energy just went way up. Uh, at the time, my daughter was two. And in my previous job, I would just sort of come home and just sort of plop on the couch. And if she wanted to play, she had to come to me at the couch. Uh, but then with this new job, you know, I could go out, run around, chase her, you know, play tag, all those things that kids love to do. Um, and, again, I wasn't really necessarily trying. You know, I was just trying to do my, you know, focused on doing a good job. Uh, but little by little, all these, you know, great things started to happen. Um, and like you said, you know, once you sort of, get an idea of how to cook without oil uh, at home, we started using way, way less uh, and way less salt. Um, and so it was just sort of a natural progression kind of a thing. Uh-huh. Cool. And when you, um, when you work at your spa, is, this a, it, is it a residential situation where you, you and your family live there or you commute in? Uh, no, no, no. I come in, and uh, you know, the center here is, you know, we call it a um, a wellness center. Uh, it's essentially a hotel. People come in, they check in, they get the room, and then we feed them, you know, very uh, delicious and healthy food three times a day. Um, and you know, everybody who works here just sort of drives from home. Uh, there are some people who live very nearby, so they just walk. But uh, yeah, it's just. It's a regular job. You know, it's a cool place to work, um, great people to work with, um, and it just happens to be really healthy. Uh-huh. And so what's the biggest change you see in others when they adopt a plant-based lifestyle? 
Like, are you oh, there enough geez. to actually see how it affects the clients that are coming in? Absolutely, yeah. Uh, you know, just about everybody loses weight. Um, I would say 99% of the people here lose weight. Uh, and a lot of them, uh, they stop taking, you know, they come in taking, you know, 7, 8, 10, 12 types of medication. And a lot of them, when they leave, they, you know, they're like, okay, here, I don't need none of these anymore. Um, you see a lot of uh, improvement on their, just in their appearance, you know, their skin and their, the way they move. We would see a lot of people come in, you know, using canes or they struggle with walking. And when they leave, you know, they're just walking normal like anybody else. Um, and I'm sure there's a whole lot of other, you know, benefits uh, here. The kitchen staff are not allowed to know any medical uh, info on any patients. Uh, but you can just tell, you know, from the loss uh-huh. of weight and the way that people move, um, we know that they're much in much better shape when they leave. Uh-huh. And the, the center has um, a whole staff, right? Like they have um, doctors and nurses and physical oh, yeah. therapists and you know, meditation teachers and yoga teachers and every massage therapist, all that stuff, right? Correct. We even have a um, esthetician here, uh, Hillary, who does all the facials and the waxing, you know, and all that stuff that people need. <laughs> uh-huh. So, so, yeah, we got and, uh, oh. um, medical doctors here. People get uh, checked twice a day, you know, once in the morning, once in the evening, Um so everybody gets looked after, uh, you know, and then we have a whole kitchen staff, a whole housekeeping, front desk, all that good stuff. Uh-huh. Um, and what do you see is the biggest obstacle for people when they try to make this switch? I think it's the mindset, uh, the sort of the fear that, you know, like, oh, my God, you know, I'm going you know, to eat healthy and you know, I'm going to be starving and, uh, you know, it's not going to taste good, you know. It's, it's I've never done it this way, kind of a thing. Um, and you see sometimes people when they come in, they're like looking around, going, "I was like, oh my god, what did I get myself into?" You know, the sort of deer in headlights kind of look. Uh, and if anybody, uh, I, if I ever see anybody like that, I just you know say, "Hey, you know, welcome. Uh, glad you're here. You know." You'll start eating tomorrow, uh, you know, and it's going to be great. Uh, just, you know, all we ask is that you give it a try and then, you know, you'll be fine. And so that just sort of puts their mind at ease. And, you know, within a couple of days, they're like, oh, my God, this is great. Um, and we have no restrictions on how much people eat. They can eat as much as they want um, and they still lose weight. Uh-huh. Right. Right, I would think, you know, with that diet, you, you can eat as much, and you get, you, you start um, noticing when you fill up, I think, quicker when you're eating real food than when you're eating food that's masked with oil, salt, and sugar. Correct, yeah. Yeah, and what um, happens is that the How many people are there changes. at a time? Um, we run anywhere from, like, 30 to, like, Low 70s, I think low 70s is our, you know, max uh, occupation. Um, right now, I think we're in the low 60s at the moment. Uh-huh. How has the COVID-19 affected your facility? Uh, when the shutdowns uh, begin, you know, our senses definitely drop. You know, people who are canceling because they couldn't fly, uh, they can get here kind of thing. Uh, and that whole uncertainty of, like, you know, I'm going to a place where there's a bunch of people that I don't know kind of a thing. Um, so that definitely dropped our numbers. Um, but what happened was, um, curiously enough, with the lockdowns, we had a lot of people locally who could drive who were like, well, you know, you guys have space because, you know, I, I'm – I'm not going to work right now, and, you know, I got nothing to do, you know, and I can, you know, get there in an hour, you know. Uh, so we sort of, you know, with the local crowd, we filled up back again. Um, and now we're sort of at a constant high 50s, low 60s kind of a thing. 
Uh huh. And is it only residential, or can people commute in? Um. We call them inpatients. So once they come in and they check in, they're here. Uh, we at the moment we're not allowing any uh, sort of visitors or people who just want to come in and you know eat lunch kind of a thing, which we used to do. Uh, uh-huh. But now when people come in, uh, you know they go through a whole medical screening. Uh, some people they have to be you know sort of isolated for a few days just to make sure everybody's safe. Um, and after that, they <laughs> we release them into the general population, <laughs> uh-huh. um, and then uh, and then yeah, everybody's everybody's fine. You know, all the the staff gets a temperature check every day when they come in. Uh, you know, everybody's wearing masks, um, and so you know we're just adapting to the whole to the new normal. Right, right. And so, um, how long do people usually come in and stay for? Uh, I think the average stay is about, <clears throat> excuse me, two weeks. Um, we've had people here who have been here, uh, stayed here for years. We had a guy uh, who was here for, I think, four years. A lady really? here stayed here for a couple years. Um, but I'd say the average is about two weeks. Um, the average stay is they'll come in for a day. Uh, you know, they'll eat um uh, from our um, dining room area, and then they'll go through their initial doctor checkup, um, and then they'll they'll fast for a week, which means they they just drink water, you know, to do, allow their bodies to heal. Does everyone do that? Is that part the, of the? Uh, no, um, no, event? not everybody does that. Not everybody is necessarily allowed. You know, the majority of people do because that's sort of our 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 big thing here. Um, but it has to be medically approved, you know, medically screened and all that. Um, and then after a week of fasting, you know, then they start eating and then they are, you know, they feel great. They've lost a bunch of weight. They, you know, like I said, they stop using a bunch of medication. You know, their blood pressure has, you know, come back to normal and they're, they're happy as can be. Uh huh. And when you say fast, you're talking about a pure water fast, correct? Pure water fast, correct, yeah. Uh-huh. Wow. So There's not many our, places that, uh, I mean, a lot of places do fast, but they do fast with, you know, um, with uh, s- smoothies or drinks or whatever, but yours is just a water fast. Yeah. No, we, we <laughs> for us, fasting means water. Uh, if you're If you're drinking juice, you're juicing. Right. You're right. You're right. Um, (laughs) Chef Bravo, we're going to take a couple-minute break, and when we come back, I want to hear about some of the other projects you're working on, because I know you've been there for almost 13 years, but I think you have some other projects you're working on. So everyone who's just joined us, I'm talking with Chef Ramsey Bravo from True North Health Center, and you're listening to Bhavani at IE Green. Be right back. New Yorkers are generous and they are grateful and gracious and when you need help we will be there for you the soldiers in this fight are our health care professionals it's the doctors it's the nurses it's the people who are working in the hospitals it's the aides they are the soldiers who are fighting this battle for us You know the expression, save our troops, troops, quote unquote. In this battle, the troops are healthcare professionals. Thank you, the Progressive Radio Network. Progressive Radio Network. The Thinking Person Station. This is Karen Hartglass, host of It's All About Food. And you're listening to PRN, your source for progressive, up-to-date, and inspirational information on nutrition and health. Stay up to date with PRN for the latest on the coronavirus. Learn ways to stay spiritually vibrant and physically strong on PRN.FM, the progressive radio network.
This is PRN, Progressive Radio Network. PRN, the Progressive Radio Network, your home for progressive thinkers. Everybody and welcome back. You're listening to Bhavani at IE Green on the Progressive Radio Network. I'm here with my guest, Chef Bravo from True North Health Center. And we are talking about his plant based um plant based cooking and what he's been doing for past almost thirteen years at True North. So Chef Bravo, um right before the break I was starting to ask you what other projects you've been working on since you've been working at True North? Uh, so a couple of things that I've done is, uh, you know, I've written a couple of um, cookbooks, uh, which have been very well received. Uh, Bravo Cookbook was the first one, and then that was published, I think, about nine years ago. Uh, and then the uh, Bravo Express, my second book, was published about a year and a half ago. Um and then after that, uh, recently I uh, put together a, a website, bravopb.com, uh, where I have uh, my online, you know, plant-based uh, cooking course. Um, the first one, at least, that I, you know, the second one was scheduled to film in March, but we had to postpone it because of the whole um, COVID situation. Um, I'm hoping that we can film it in, in August. Um, you know, we're still looking at all the logistics. Um, but yeah, that's been my, my latest project. Um, you know, it's been kind of fun learning all the things that you do for a website. I'm, uh, as a 42 year old, I'm not, uh, I'm a little bit, uh, <laughs> tech challenged. Uh, so it's been kind of fun learning all the ins and out of that. Um, but my idea with that is just to put out information for anybody who's, interested in plant-based cooking um, to, you know, learn a pretty a well-rounded uh, uh, course, uh, which is very affordable. You know, it's a one-time payment of $20 for lifetime access. Wow. Um, that is affordable. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, that is affordable. It, the, my idea was to make it um, – available for everybody um you know i couldn't do it for free because i had to you know invest a, a chunk of money into it um but i thought at twenty dollars uh it's accessible for anyone you know anywhere in the world kind of a thing um uh-huh. and as you were mentioning in the you know in the first 10 15 minutes of your show and you were talking about uh you know i forget the word you used the Defund the oil uh, industry. Right, divest. Uh, kind of industry. Divest, yes, thank you. Uh, you know, I think, you know, doing sort of the same thing for the meat industry and then just getting the information out there for everybody to say, hey, you know, this, you could be eating plant based and it could be, you know, very fulfilling and very tasty. Uh, and here's how to do it. Uh, right. And so that's my, that's sort of my mission with what I'm doing here with the, with the website. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you've heard, but Cory Booker and Senator Elizabeth Warren both have um, supported a bill or came up with a bill to end factory farming by 2040. I know it still seems like 20 years away, but there's a lot of work to undo something that's been going on for so many years. But um, that's really exciting, you know, because for those that do eat meat, um, even though I also believe that plant-based is – best way to go. Um, for those that do eat meat, there is a difference between eating factory farm meat versus meat that's sustainably grass-fed and raised p- with people who are treating their animals humanely. So um, yeah. just for those I listeners think every, that are out there that are meat eaters, I just want to e- re- reiterate that, that there is a difference and that, um, you know, getting grass-fed Sustainably raised meat is certainly better than factory farm. And there is a movement to end factory farm, which I'm really so supportive of. 
So um, yeah, I think there's a, a big movement of, you know, like, hey, you know, you eat meat, you get things like uh, COVID-19 kind of a thing, uh, you know, and bird flu and all those, you know, mad cow disease. Um, and so I think people are starting to pay attention, which is which is good to know. It's good to see. Uh, yeah, all these pandemics originally originate from an animal, right? So Correct. So, uh-huh. so can yeah. you tell us a little bit about your cookbooks? Uh, sure. Uh, so uh, they're different in style. Um, both of them are uh, plant-based, uh, no salt, no oil, no sugar. The difference is the first one, um, I wrote it with the intention of basically making uh, dishes that anybody um, would, you know, we we call this the center here the prison because while people are fasting, they're not allowed to leave. Um, so we say, you know, we take anybody from outside the prison here um, and feed them, you know, any of these dishes, and they wouldn't know the difference between a regular, you know, dish and what we are giving them. Um, uh-huh. And so what happened was uh, I just put a lot of work into these recipes, and I didn't, you know, I didn't put any restrictions on the amount of ingredients per recipe or preparation time uh, for some of them. Uh, I have an amazing um, oatmeal French toast recipe uh, in the book, Uh, Uh actually two versions of it in the book, Uh, but that requires, you know, making the oatmeal, uh, putting it in a, setting in a container and letting it sit overnight. So it's a sort of a two-day type of recipe, Uh, not complicated at all. It just takes time. Um, Uh So for the second book, uh, some of the comments that I got from the first one was like, hey, you know, I love your recipes. They're great. I just don't have the time. You know, some of these recipes are very tasty, but there's a lot of ingredients on them. Um, So the focus for the second book, the Bravo Express, um, as the name uh, hints at, uh, it's recipes that are five, six ingredients, uh, and about three steps. So they're all like boom, 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 get it done, dishes made, dinners on the table kind of thing. Uh huh. Right, right. And these days, so many people need that because that's one thing that I do say. You know, it's like cooking vegetarian food does take longer than cooking meat. You know, for in many cases. Um, you know, I used to do private chefing. And uh, when I was cooking a meat dish for somebody, I almost felt like I was cheating. I mean, you know, they didn't even want any fancy reduction sauce. They just wanted, like, the meat, you know. So I just salt and pepper uh-huh. and broil it, you know, or, or put yeah. it on the grill. <laughs> and they just wanted to taste yeah. the meat. So there was nothing else to do. Whereas to create a vegetarian dish that was flavorful, it w- it would take a lot of chopping and sautéing and prepping and, you know, it was much more involved than meat. So if I needed to get out quickly, <laughs> I would cook meat or fish for them, you know. If I had more time, yeah. I would cook vegetarian. So it really depended. Um, so that's that's the difference. I want to ask you a little bit more about this oatmeal French toast. What is – do you use a bread or are you using oatmeal as the basis yeah. for the French toast? Oatmeal. It's it's oatmeal. The whole base is oatmeal. So you let the oatmeal set overnight, and and then it gets firm enough to act as a French toast. Correct. So you know, once it firms up, the next day you can actually flip the container over onto a cutting board, and then you know, uh, allow it to release from the container, and then you get this almost like a loaf of bread at that point, which you can cut and in any shape you want, whatever thickness you want. Um, and then you, we, we bake it in the oven, uh, and while that's going, you know, we, we have a sauce there on the side cooking. Uh, so once the French toast is done out of the oven, you know, we pour the sauce, and out it goes. And what's the, what's the sauce? Oh, we do multiple versions of what we do yesterday. We had this uh, dried apricot sauce, so we get some dried apricots, uh, and we simmer them in some um, apple juice. Uh, with a little cinnamon. Uh, uh-huh. The idea is just to get the apricots nice and soft so that when we put them in the um, in the blender, uh, they're nice and soft, and then you get this sort of uh, 
thick, sweet puree uh, that we can then just sort of pour over the, the French toast. Um, right. Sometimes we'll do other fruits. There'll be uh, sometimes we, if we want a creamy, uh, you know, sort of uh, version of the sauce, we'll add some cashews to it. Uh, sometimes we'll do fresh fruit, fresh berries, uh, bananas, uh, you know, multiple variations of it. Um, uh huh. And, and the, will that work with steel cut oats, oats too, or just oat um, rolled oats? Uh, it works with any any oats, actually. So in, in the book, the first book, the Bravo Cookbook, there is a version of it using rolled oats uh, with the sauce that I just described, the apricot uh, sauce. Uh-huh. Uh, and then there's a version with uh, steel-cut oats um, using a uh, bananas for the sauce on that one. Lovely. Uh-huh. Um, for those listeners, you know, a, a tip that I – came up or didn't come up with but was turned on to years ago was making steel cut oats where you just you boil them i love steel cut oats uh, more than regular rolled oats but they takes longer so you know steel, regular oats you can have you know your oatmeal in you know five minutes seven minutes steel cut oats right. takes more like half an hour but if you boil the oats the night before for just like 30 seconds or a minute boil the oats turn it off and just let it sit on the stove Overnight, when you come down in the morning, it's finished. So that's a great way of making steel cut oats and having it ready in the morning. Having it ready in the morning, yeah, yeah. So that's a really nice thing. Um, and so in the Bravo Express, which is the book that I have in front of me right now, all the all the recipes are very very simple. Um, with them, which would you say is your favorite? Um. Or share a couple favorites with us. Yeah, I'm trying to think. Um, I really like the, um, and it's and it's a big hit as well here with with the uh, with our clients the um, lemon parsley dressing. That's a really good one. Uh, what else? What do you use? It? The, what do you use? Uh, um, base for the lemon parsley. Oh, I have it right here. One cup of lemon yeah, juice. Yeah, so it's. Go ahead. Go, go ahead. You can give them the recipe. I don't. I don't remember the the exact amounts off the top of my head. One cup lemon juice. One cup chopped fresh parsley, lightly packed. A quarter cup raw cashews and five cloves garlic. Now you you don't have to soak the co- um, cashews first to get them soft. Uh, no, you just you know make sure you you blend it nice and smooth uh, in the blender. One trick I use sometimes. Uh, if you're blending nuts in the in the uh, in the blender, is you put all the ingredients in there, you know, the nuts and the liquid, uh, and you you know turn turn the blender on for you know 10 seconds or so, and what that'll do is it'll chop up the the cashews, uh, uh-huh. and then you just let it sit for about five minutes. So it speeds up your soaking process because the pieces are smaller. Um, and then when you come back five minutes later, you go ahead and, you know, get it nice and smooth. Uh, and it just, it goes much faster kind of a thing. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And do you use any um, soy products in your cooking, like tofu, um, tofu, tempeh, those kind of things? Yeah, absolutely. Um, we just don't use them, you know, sort of every day. We don't, we don't approach it as well, you know, since we can't use steak, uh, we will need to have a, you know, a hunk of tofu or tempeh every, every single day. Um, it's more of a, you know, whole food plant-based getting as many greens and grains and veggies and, you know, lentils as we can. And then we go ahead and sprinkle here and there a little bit of tempeh, a little bit of tofu, uh, and, you know, once a week, once every two weeks kind of a thing. Uh-huh. Okay, so not that often. You don't use it as, you don't use it as your main protein source. No, we don't use it as a main you know, our main proteins I would say is the all the wonderful beans that we use. You know, the the ones that most everybody knows, like the the black beans and the kidney beans and the navy beans. Uh but we also use a lot of uh, heirloom beans like uh Christmas beans and uh, orca beans and rattlesnake beans and uh, European soldiers uh and uh, many varieties of lentils also um so 
Yeah, there's so many kinds of beans that people don't even know about. We really kind of know just the ones that come in cans that are just, you know, a few of them. But there's so many different beans out there. Um, one recipe that looks really great in here is these coconut bites. You want to talk about them? They just look so good. So um, one of the recipes in his book is coconut bites, which just looks so great. And um, for these coconut bites, you want two cups of diced mango, two ripe bananas diced, one cup of unsweetened pineapple juice, and then one teaspoon of vanilla extract, four cups of unsweetened shredded dried coconut, and three-quarters cup of unsweetened shredded dried coconut toasted. And so you put the mango, banana, pineapple juice, and vanilla in a small pot and cook over medium-low heat for six minutes. You can use a vanilla bean, um, half a vanilla bean, cut in half lengthwise if you prefer, instead of the teaspoon of vanilla. And then you, um, you can scrape the seeds from the vanilla bean if you do that and put that into the pot and discard the pot. So then you're going to transfer the mango mixture to a food processor Add the four cups of coconut and pulse that until it's smooth and firm. Then you're going to put the toasted coconut in a small bowl or on a plate. I like using like a pie pan for that. Um, and then using a small ice cream scoop or a spoon, scoop out a small amount of the fruit and coconut mixture, roll it into a one-inch ball with your hands, and then roll it into the toasted coconut. And you repeat that process with the, with all of it. And it these just look so delicious. I'm really excited to try them. But so many of the recipes look really wonderful. And it's, um, you know, as I have been experimenting more and more with cooking with less oil and less salt myself, it's really been eye-opening how many extra things you can use or alternative things you can use to give it a flavor, like in the... Um, oatmeal French toast that he was talking about. You know, in my head I'm thinking, well, how can you have French toast without maple syrup? But of course you can have French toast without maple syrup using fruit as your sweetener. And um, when you take something that's really sweet and blend it, I mean, I'll use dates a lot of time too to give some extra sweetness to some of my vegan pies. And, um, you know, that's really a great thing. I'll show you another one of his recipes that just looks so delicious is this um, these noodles. Let me find this noodle dish again. They just look so good. Here, these spicy soba noodles. And um, you can use any kind of noodles if you don't have soba noodles. But you get a six-ounce package of soba noodles, two cups of a jalapeno peanut dressing, and I'll tell you about that in a minute, one cup of shredded carrots, one cup of fresh basil leaves, lightly packed, a quarter cup peeled and chopped fresh ginger, and one teaspoon of sesame seeds toasted. And you're going to cook the noodles until the packet, cook the noodles according to the instructions and drain in a colander and rinse under cold water. And any time you're cooking noodles, especially noodles that are um, not wheat-based, you want to run it under cold water just to stop the cooking, to lock it in. Then you're going to transfer the noodles to a medium bowl, and you're going to add this dressing. And the dressing is also very simple. The dressing just has one jalapeno chili, one cup of no-salt added vegetable broth, a quarter cup of rice vinegar, and a quarter cup of raw peanuts that you can toast. And you put all the ingredients in a blender, process on high speed for one minute, and that's it. And to toast the peanuts... You can just put it in an oven, um, dry, until, you know, depending on your oven and depending on the heat, until they get toasted. Or you can also do it in a cast iron frying pan. Just put the raw nuts right in there and just toast them over the a flame, just moving the pan a lot until you toast them. And that just brings the flavor out. So um, you're just going to pour the dressing over the noodles, add the basil, the ginger, and some fresh sesame seeds, if you'd like, also toasted. And that's it. Super easy, looks so beautiful, and it's really delicious. All right, we lost you for a bit, but you came back just 
just in time to share with my listeners again how they can um, find all access to your website and to your course because I think for, like you said, $20, it is a wonderful, wonderful deal and can really change their life. So please share with my listeners again how they would find you online. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so if you go to bravopb.com, uh, that's uh, B-R-A-V-O-P-V.com. Uh, that's the website. And then you go to uh, click on uh, courses, um, and that's, you know, they'll take you to the page where you sign up for the for the one course that's there. Uh, again, and, you know, I'm hoping to film the second one here in August, um, which is going to be sort of the advanced uh, course. Uh, and then we also have plans to do a third one, which is going to be uh, ethnic foods. So the course will be like, you know, this is the Italian uh, lesson, and this is the Mexican lesson, and this is the Persian, and so on and so forth. Um, but the twenty dollar so registration fee covers all of the courses, correct? Or do you have to pay for each uh, no, course? Each, each course is uh, will be separate. You know, it, I end up having to do a, a separate investment every time we film. So, uh-huh. um, but they're all going to be you know reasonably priced. None, none of these uh, will be out of reach for people. Again, the idea is to be able to spread the word, get people interested uh, and educated on how to make delicious plant-based meals. Uh, and then uh, the the books, you can find them on Amazon. You know, that'd be the <laughs> simplest way. Uh, uh, there are uh, links uh, on the website to that, so you can sort of check them out there. And if you click, it'll take you to, you know, how to, how to get them. There's also uh, a free recipe database on there on the website, so you can check out some free recipes in there. Uh, and there's a a blog, food blog as well, where I do some uh, uh, link some some of my YouTube videos in there uh, about food. You know, sometimes I'll do uh, recipes. You know, like this one particular recipe. Here you go, or. Uh, uh, Tips on how to cut a melon, kind of a thing. Uh, uh-huh. So that's all. That's all on there. So you know, the website is not just for people to go and 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 buy the course. There's also some uh, free content there as well. Wonderful. And I'll share all those links on my website too. So if any of you are listening and didn't get to write it down, you can just go to my website at ieetgreen.com, and all of the links will be there. But, Chef Bravo, so I want to thank you so much for joining us. Um, it w- was just wonderful to have you on, and your cookbook is wonderful. Um, I'm looking forward to making many of these recipes, and thank you for joining us. Hey, and thank you everyone so much out there who's uh, you're welcome. And everyone who's out there listening, thank you for joining us. You've been listening to I Eat Green at the Progressive Radio Network. Thanks again, and see you all next week. Have a great weekend. Bye for now.